Hey everyone and welcome to Silver Screen Dude's review of Agatha All Along episode 5. As you can see I am solo today. Nico is busy off gallivanting around London getting ready for the BFI Film Festival. So that should be fun. Stay tuned to the channel to see what he comes up with. But today we're here for Agatha. So if you've been following this series you'll be well aware that Nico isn't the biggest fan. I started more positive, but we have had a lot of criticism for the series. So arguably, has this become the most interesting episode of Agatha so far? Let's dive in. So I'm going to take you through this as per the points that I made as I was watching it. So forgive me if it's a bit all over the place, but you'll know what I'm talking about. Spoiler alert. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, please do switch off and come back. But let us know what you think in the comments. So really straight away, when we saw the throwback and the recap at the beginning, it highlighted the scene from WandaVision where we saw Agatha being killed by her mother and the coven. That was interesting straight away because it kind of told us that that was going to be Agatha's trial, whether it was in this episode or not, and the challenge was going to be against her mother, which makes sense. The call back to Agatha being killed by her mother during the Salem witch trials, as shown on WandaVision, underlines her dark past and the weight of her actions. Her mother plays a role in a trial, so it indicates that Agatha's past is catching up with her in a literal or symbolic sense. Facing her mother again may represent Agatha confronting her guilt or past mistakes or suggesting this trial is more personal. It's definitely personal. They're all personal, but they're not necessarily unique. Every single one has been in a house with the surroundings changed to dictate to that character, which obviously it should if it's their trial. But I'd like to see a bit more variety from these trials. like is there going to be one outside you know that would be interesting um but the sets the sets are interesting the production design i think we've flagged before um is really quite cool in places although we do come, we do touch on that a little bit moving forward one thing i did notice was the shift in coloration in the production design when it came to the salem seven now obviously the seeing the salem seven was a vision and the colour scheme was very obviously different. So as we've seen in, in The Witch's Road, everything has a purple taint. All the branding has a purple taint and one, Agatha herself has a purple taint. The change in coloration for the Salem Seven might signify evolving alliances or a shift in power dynamic. Purple is associated with magic in the MCU. Being present for the Coven suggests that a continued focus on magical powers. This could also hint at visual storytelling and distinguishing different characters or factions. It could be any of those things. What do you think? I think the distinction for me was between reality and the vision, but it does also represent those other characters, especially as I keep wanting to say Wanda, uh, as, as Agatha is shrouded in purple. So it does give that significant sort of plane, but it was a vision of something that actually happened. So it's quite an interesting shift. One thing I did notice is that we saw that the Salem Seven did evolve from animals. So I remember noticing a fox, a crow, a snake, an owl. Let me know if you noticed any other uh, any other animals there because we're missing three. These creatures seem to represent a new threat, possibly the spirits or children of witches Agatha killed, which we think the Salem Seven are, and it was mentioned in the episode. Their monstrous cartoonish appearance might suggest an exaggerated form of magical vengeance or a curse, giving them otherworldly power. Their timing, coinciding with Agatha's current situation on the Witch's Road, suggests some cosmic or magical convergence where past wrongs are coming to haunt her. I think that's quite obvious <laughs> that, you know, it's coming after her. I think that's been made quite obvious. What I thought was a bit jumbled is where the Salem Seven came from in the first place. All of a sudden, as soon as she's trying to venture down the Witch's Road, they just appeared from nowhere. It just seems like a storyline that could have been better integrated into the show because why are they coming after her now? Have they had a sense or a warning or has the kid told them about it? Have they always been involved? Are they part of his journey? We'll come a bit more onto that shortly. But that's just occurred to me as we've been talking. Could be a thing. The set design for The Witch's Road was something that I really liked from the beginning. I liked the almost cartoon essence of it, the coloration, the design. But coming being a filmmaker, I think I just appreciated it for what it was however when I was watching the episode with my husband he quite rightly said it feels like a set and he's right it does feel like a set the observation about the set feeling obvious echoes what some fel fans felt about Loki where the environments at times felt too staged or artificial while the aesthetic might be deliberate emphasizing a theatrical or constructed feeling it can take away from the immersion if it feels overly fake 
It's worth noting, though, that Marvel often balances practical and CGI effects, and this set design could reflect a purposeful style choice. Which is a good point to make. It probably is purposeful, but why? Are they wanting the Witch's Road to feel like a make-believe world? Because it kind of is. It's not make-believe, it's real in this universe, but it's not somewhere that people go very often. It's dangerous, it's treacherous, you're probably going to die. So whatever the power behind the Witch's Road is that makes it what it is, is it supposed to feel like that? Or is it just jarring for us as a viewer? Let us know what you think. I absolutely love the fact that they used tree roots as brooms and all just hopped on them. But straight away I was like, well, the kid can get on it. He's claiming not really to have any powers and to be a bit unknowledgeable, but he jumped straight away on the broom. And straight away I was like, that's a bit jarring. But then the more you get into it, the more it makes sense. The lack of explanation for how the kid could suddenly use tree roots as a broom suggests there might be more to his magical heritage. If the child really is Wanda's son, Billy, also known as Wiccan in the comics, his latent powers could be awakening, especially in, in a place infused with magic like the Witch's Road. Now, again, spoiler, 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 this kind of jumps us to the end and we do have some of the points to go into. But I don't know about you guys, like straight away, as soon as he was introducing himself to Agatha and he couldn't say his name out loud and it became a W over his mouth. To me, that either said Wanda or it said Wiccan. So the question has been through his journey, which one is he? Is he... Well, obviously he's not Wanda, but is he Wiccan or is it Wanda that's put a spell over his mouth that stopped him from saying something? You know, there was a couple of tricky little things in there, but I think it's become quite obvious that it's Wiccan. Either that or it's Wanda in disguise. But we find out more. Is the kid Billy, Wanda's son? It's plausible that this character is Billy. His blue bandana in WandaVision was symbolic. And in the comics, they establish him as Wiccan, one of Wanda's twin sons. In WandaVision, Wanda wanted her children through her magic, and although they weren't real, this story might explore how her magic could bring them back in some form, possibly tying them to Agatha's storyline. Now, bearing in mind that Wanda obviously created that world and she imprisoned Agatha within it, surely she would have had to have made it real in some sort of sense, and she's powerful enough to do that because of all the other people, all the other factors, all the other things going on in the town. It is plausible that her sons became real too. And especially when we see her waking up in the cabin, I think it's at the end of WandaVision, right? Where it basically opens it up for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, where she hears her children. So there's more to it. And I think we're now going to find out. And I think it's all of a sudden become a lot more interesting. Another thing that I noticed was Rio's change in allegiance. And I'm sure none of us have bypassed this. Straight away, she comes into it. She's trying to kill Wanda. Then she's like, oh, you don't want to kill me while I'm weak. You want to kill me while I'm powerful. Like, if her real intention was to kill her, unless we're going all James Bond, she would have killed her. Since we found out that they were in a relationship, does she really want to kill her? Or did she have her heart broken? And did she want to get her revenge? Did seeing her again awake, reawaken those feelings? We don't really know what her real intention is yet, but I'm getting the feeling that she's no longer the main storyline. Rio's shift from wanting to kill Agatha to joining the Coven could hint at a deeper agenda. Perhaps she's distinguishing her true intentions, or there's something about Agatha's power or situation that changed her mind. This could be a slow-burning subplot that reveals a bigger twist. I'm a huge fan of Catherine Hahn. I have been for a long time. I love everything that she's been in. I can't remember what the first thing was, but I remember it being something really silly and comedic and she's not afraid of taking the mick out of herself. She's not afraid of having fun. And I've always loved that about her. You know, everything from, uh, why can't I think of anything she's been in? Uh, Bad Mom, she's hilarious in that. Um, WandaVision, she's absolutely exceptional. She's just in so much stuff. And you know when someone says to you, what's your favorite film? And you forget every film that you've ever seen. I feel like that's just happened to me. <laughs> but with her acting, she's just phenomenal. It's great that she continues to shine in the role, despite some poor writing, especially with transformations like becoming Mrs. Hart when she acted her out when they were on the Ouija board. She was a central figure in WandaVision's sitcom illusion as well. This transformation seems to reinforce Agatha's connection to her magical and philosophical manipulation. So I think it was an important point when they were playing, when they were doing the Ouija board, better to be able to do that. We actually saw quite a lot of Agatha's evil side this time. Circling back to Agatha's mum, now, it became obvious from the recap by going that far back into WandaVision that she was going to be in it, whether it was this episode or not, and clearly her mother was her trial. Agatha being forced to face her mother, Evanora Harkness, could be a punishment worse than death for her as it confronts her with her deepest failures. The mention of Nicholas Scratch, Agatha's son in the comics, 
pulling her from the trance could imply that even though Agatha's family has been the source of her trauma, there may be some protective dynamic or complex family ties playing out. I think that had to happen. If we were going to go into Agatha's life, if we're going to deep dive and go down the road where you know you're going to be challenged and you're going to be traumatised and you're going to have trials, especially looking at the other's trials, it, yeah, it's kind of obvious her mum's going to come back, right? Is there any truth in Agatha being evil for when she was born, like her mother states? Says she should have killed her as soon as she came out of her body. That's harsh. You know, if her mother really saw her that way from her being born, did her mother make her evil? Or was she really born evil? There are some questions starting to evolve that are getting quite interesting now, I feel. We now know the name of the Fire Witch. I think she was the Fire Witch. Um, Alice. I don't know if any of you cottoned on to that before. As she was trying to save, save Agatha, obviously Agatha started to take her power, which was a real no moment, especially when she'd gone from being so vulnerable in front of her mother to almost proving her mother right. But she was also between possessions with the mother as well. Was the mother making her do that? Is she starting to become good? Is she still just evil at the root? Getting interesting, right? If Alice was killed before the audience even knew her name, it might be a narrative tactic to emphasise how expendable some characters are, or perhaps it serves just a shock. The kid, Billy, Wiccan, whoever he is, could now play a bigger role, having a personal stake in what happens next, especially if he has a hidden connection to the story. Now, I think we know that by the end of the episode, that he has a hidden connection to the story, all right? If Agatha knows the child is Billy, Wanda's son, it suggests she may have ulterior motives, or Billy might have been sent by Wanda as part of a larger plan. Wanda's influence could be lurking in the background, using Billy as a proxy to either stop or control Agatha. Now, I don't know about you guys, but for the first time, I thought it was tangible that Wanda could have, could be in this series, like we could see Wanda at the end. When he, you first started to see the electricity in his hands and then you all of a sudden saw the disc, it was like, is that Wanda pretending to be Billy? Has it been her the whole time? Did she engage the Salem Seven? Has she come after Agatha? Loads more questions that we want to see unravel. And for the first time, it's made me quite excited for next week's episode. Like None of the others have, have done that yet. I've wanted to watch it to give it some more forgiveness to see if we can get some more out of it. But this time I'm actually quite excited. Did anybody else notice the song choice at the end after we saw the shot of who we think is Billy with the headpiece just like Wanda's, just like sitting on him like a crown? Now, if you guys know Billie Eilish's song Crown, those lyrics are badass. So the positioning not only of the music and the vibe of the music itself, the lyricism of the song is perfectly placed. So bravo to the music supervisor for that. Absolutely fantastic music placement. Billie Eilish's Crown being chosen for the end suggests themes of power, control and inner turmoil. The lyrics of the song could parallel Agatha's journey, especially her struggle with guilt, power and the legacy of what she's done. There's a lot of room for interpretation here, but it sounds like the series is weaving together various plot threads from WandaVision, Agatha's past, and Wanda's continuing impact on the world. The connections between Agatha and Billy, slash Wanda in particular, seem to be setting up a larger conflict or alliance. And for one, I'm here for it. So come on, Disney, Marvel, show us what you can do with this. Don't let us down. I've been hankering for a resurgence since this started. And with all the other reviews that we've given, you'll be able to see why. But I'm looking forward to next week and I hope you guys are too. But please let us know in the comments below what you thought of the episode. If you've not been enjoying it, did you think this was had a bit more potential? Let us know what you think. Hit that subscribe button, leave us a like, interact with us and come back next time. Thanks a lot, guys. See you next week.